did you notice any, was there any new ways of doing things in the COVID environment that you think will continue to be adopted or was there any new technology that was used or um, is there anything that you see emerging in the legal space that you think will be taken up more in the post-COVID world? I hope so. Um, I think because... Uh, it, it, it's a very it's a very international dispute with people all over in, you know in, in every continent almost and so as a consequence document control was incredibly important and we used an e-platform um, and the drafters were all over the place I was the only one in the southern hemisphere but when we identified exhibits that we wished to be incorporated we loaded them up to the e-platform and the solicitors processed them and gave them references and we incorporated them in witness statements. Um, we were meant to be having a four week hearing in London this year, and that's been pushed out to the first half of next year as a consequence of COVID. And for me, I, I find some of, it, of the concept difficult because in Australia, <laughs> through a combination of luck and good judgment and listening to scientists, we appear, touch wood, so far to be handling this pandemic. And, and I look at the United Kingdom where my colleagues were, my instructing solicitors were permitted one hour walk a day. And I was often getting that phone call from my lovely instructing solicitor on his one hour where he was walking through a common and I could hear the birds singing. And they were still saying that come March, there are expectations that every witness of fact will attend. And I've had to say, I don't know that the Australian government will permit Australian-based witnesses to attend. And I think there might then become a division between witnesses of fact and expert witnesses because an expert witness, I think, tribunals are far more likely because there's not, not as much credibility involved taking expert witness via video link. But where there are witnesses of fact on contested issues, I think everybody still prefers to see the white of their eyes. And, and there will be this practice where in Queensland, you know, we're talking about it, our courts have moved so quickly and impressively here to do it, to set up the opportunity for examination and cross-examination via video link just like this, where there is an e-platform and all the exhibits are numbered and you say, look up exhibit 6,824. Do you have it? Turn to the fourth page. Can you read the fifth paragraph to me? And, and you know, you can still have remotely and digitally those aha gotcha moments in cross-examination as I, I think it was, um, yeah, Justice Sofronoff was was doing a presentation for the Bar Association of Queensland a, a few weeks back, and he was talking about, you know, that aha moment. And you can still have it. It's just not, can you please look at this document? And so it's, it's different, and it will require far better organisation and uh, support of a digital platform that's, that you can trust. But I, I think... This doesn't learn. I think that everybody can, can practice more remotely. There's no need to be in the same room a lot of the time. 